of The Grinch Soul Christmas by Dr. Seuss. Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. <laughs> but whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the hoods, staring down from his cave with a sour <coughs> Grinchy frown at the warm-minded windows below in their town. For he knew every who done in Whoville beneath was busy now, hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, is practically here. So he growled with his, ner with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must so find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For, for tomorrow he knew. All the who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, noise, noise. That's the one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on Who pudding and rare Who roast feast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked to least of all. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing, They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. And they'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. Trim up the tree with Christmas stuff, the bingo balls and hoo hoo flap. Trim up the town with goo hoo gums and bills and things and swans. Trim every glass and window and trim every glass and door. Hang up hoo 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 picks, then run out and get some more. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. <coughs> Charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and coat. And he chuckled and clawed, what a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. But the Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, oh, the Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, and he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on top of his head. <laughs> Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Get up! And the sleigh started down toward the, 
Homes were the who's this, news in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, there he said, stop number one, the old Richie Claus hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. <laughs> he got stuck only at once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue. Where the who little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room, he took every and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, scrums, trickle boards, pressicles, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags, then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. And he slunk to the ice box. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. <laughs> <laughs> then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I'll stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove. When he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove, he turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. <laughs> the Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why, why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old rich was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie, he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little top, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree, the only light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I, I'll fix it up there, and then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head, and, got, and he got her a drink and sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went up, went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. The, then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other who's houses, even crumbs much too small for the other who's mouses. It was a quarter past dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet. He rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Boom, boom to the who's. He was grinchishly humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the who's down in Hoover will all cry. Boom, who. <laughs> That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. <clears throat> but the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. And he, he stared down at the little Grinch, popped his eyes, then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every hood on his bull, the tall and the small was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came, somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packaged boxes or bags. 
and he puzzled three hours till his puzzle was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast, and he... He himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha